And welcome to the latest episode of Herring Teen Han Sweat and Money, recorded on July 3rd, 2016. We may or may not have ownership or other positions in the stocks mentioned on this show. Don't buy stocks based solely off what you hear from this podcast. And always, always do your own homework and research before investing in stocks. I'm your host, Kong, along with my co host, Gibson. Let's take a look at uh, what's in the news. Uh, Monday, the Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI Market Index, came out for uh, uh, June, and it stayed at the same uh, same level as it did in May at, at 51.3, just slightly above the 50 mark, which means it's uh, still expanding and not contracting. So that's a good thing. Great. Yeah, now, uh, Chicago's own PMI numbers were also released, but it was on Wednesday, and they it, it rose by 7.5 points to 56.8 which is really good. Sweet. Now, according to the Dallas Fed, however, uh, manufacturing uh, activity in their region has declined again. But compared to the last report's release, it wasn't as such a bad. It wasn't at such a bad rate uh, as the last quarter. Now, the number of uh, new orders stayed the same from the previous period, but the growth rate for orders fell. The outlook for future business activity, however, was uh, more positive in June. <laughs> So, um, Tuesday, the Richmond Fed released its own survey, and manufacturing, of course, for its region was also down. Um, employment is still not good, uh, while the prices for raw materials actually rose. So that may have also been, I mean, that's definitely a factor in uh, affecting the manufacturing in that region, but still, I mean, this just the trend in manufacturing doesn't look good in general. Makes sense, I guess. I mean, getting outsourced, so... I don't yeah. know, just, I mean, if you want to bring politics into it, it's just funny how a lot of the, um, <clears throat> the presidential candidates are talking about trying to bring back jobs to America, and they're talking about mainly manufacturing jobs, but really, I mean, the jobs that are coming back, like, like I've been saying, um, even the same companies that used to be hiring in the 1980s, the jobs that are coming back, I mean, they're, they're, there's fewer numbers because most is being automated by machines, and, I mean, you're not going to employ as many people with manufacturing at this point. It's easy to say. It's hard to do. I think a lot of the politicians' plan was to pretty much get rid of minimum wage, drive everyone's wages down, so that, you know, we can compete with China on a uh, dollar basis on how cheap a wage might be. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to remove <laughs> minimum wage, though. Now they're like, well, you know, you can't afford anything and you are you can't afford health care. But then, hey, you have a job. It's like working for free. But at least you have a job. Yeah, we can all be their slaves just like mm-hmm. they want. So, yeah, let's take a look at the GDP numbers for the first quarter of 2016. And now they were revised higher by 1% because of stronger than expected uh, exports and imports. Now, keep in mind, when the report was released, the uh, U.S. dollar fell by 0.3%. So... Um, now, Tuesday, the Consumer Confidence Report came out, and the numbers are pretty high, 98 for June, which is higher than uh, than May's number of 93.7. So the numbers haven't been uh, this high since uh, last October. No comment. All right. So uh, Wednesday, the Personal Income and Outlays Report came out, where personal income uh, was at uh, 0.2%. I mean, well, it rose 0.2% to $37.1 billion, and personal consumption expenditures rose 0.4% to $53.5 billion. So in other words, people are earning more and spending more. Great. Yay. Sign of a healthy economy. Yeah. And on the more bad news, a stress, stress test came out on Wednesday, and Morgan Stanley looked pretty weak. Despite that, uh, a lot of other banks only barely fared better, but despite this, many of the banks announced that they would increase dividend payouts to their shareholders. Nice. Is Bank of America one of them? I'm pretty sure they are, yeah. That passed the stress test? Um, yeah. Great. But, I mean, well, I mean, yeah, good for shareholders, but then, I mean, that's just, that's like the mentality of like, oh, hey, you know, I just, uh, Got out of my, like, I just passed the sobriety test when the police pulled me over. So 
I'm going to go celebrate by drinking my ass off. Well, the, the stress test was developed. So it's, you know, when we talk about stress test, what we were talking about is really the Dodd-Frank Act. Yeah. And the Dodd-Frank Act is basically saying that, you know what, if there is another like a financial crisis incident, then the banks will be able to take care of themselves without the government bailing them out, right? But the fact of the matter is, if the banks were to fall into a crisis again, chances are the government can still bail them out. So, I mean, this is just kind of like, extra bonus really do they need, really need to abide by it not quite although you know the feds can always step in you know take away the bank's charter if they don't abide by the dot frank and pass the stress test so but we have yet to see that and you know it's new and it's kind of hard for them to expect the immediate compliance to it well it's not exactly new new i mean they, they've they've gone into these stress tests for a while and i mean the fact that jp morgan i mean granted the thing is is that their standards are constantly changing. So it's almost like a hermeneutic circle that you're chasing after. But um, it's just, uh, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say it's new. These these banks, they, they, they can, they're still preparing for it. Yeah, so. I would say, well, I'm just saying like a relative time frame of things that is still new and takes time to implement and react to all the new requirements. All right, well. Uh, so despite the actual home sales numbers having risen, the pending home sales numbers have actually slipped in May. This is partially due to the shortage of affordable houses. So it's kind of weird. I mean, you have actual home home sales rising, but then pending sales numbers dropping. So I don't know. I, I wonder maybe it has something to do with like the, the pressure of, oh, you know, the interest rate might rise soon. So you might need to buy your houses now. Once that mm. demand is exhausted, then really there's nothing more to do, right? This is like the best time to buy it. And then once you bought it, then every single time after that is just going to get worse. Well, no, I mean, like this is this is for the like this was calculated for the month of May, though. I mean, like granted, we were worrying about like the Brexit and all that before that. But it wasn't it didn't get nearly as much news as it did right up until the uh the the vote in in the end of June. Well, there there were a lot of talks about raising an interest rate come June, right? Right. But the minute the Brexit happened, the Feds were basically on pause and waiting to right, see what right. happened. But this is the num. These are the numbers for May, so June is not even a much of a factor, really, right? Well, then it's still. I I mean, I think a lot of if if within the last three months, there's just like a lot of sentiment that they feel like the Feds might raise interest rates, so maybe that had an effect with it. If not, then I don't know what could possibly cause it, but no one truly knows, so. Yeah, all right, well. Now, uh, U.S. jobless claims were actually higher at 268,000 people applying. Estimates didn't expect 1,000 more applications. So, um, any thoughts? 1,000 people needed to (laughs) get work? Pretty much. Um, yeah, I don't know what it means in the larger scale things, but hey, let's move on. So uh, new rules on fuel efficiency plus the excess extraction for uh, natural gases have led to a drop in natural gas uh, and uh, fuel prices. Well, natural gas prices specifically, I should say. Um, gas, on the other hand, has been rising quite a bit, at least here. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Um, now, the St. Louis Fed Chairman James Bullard came out uh, with a statement saying that uh, while he's uncertain about the future, he said that things did not look pessimistic, meaning that the Brexit may not be the end of the world. Uh, the next day, when asked what policies the U.S. Fed had left in the toolbox, he mentioned a couple uh, and said that the Fed could do more during an economic shock Uh, on Bloomberg TV. He also uh, admitted that while low interest rates may not necessarily be the economic stimulus policy that we had all hoped for, it may just be the policy that is needed for, um, uh, well, it may be the policy that's needed to get the economy going again, despite criticisms of uh, how, uh, how low interest rates punish savers. So I'm not quite sure. What's the issue with the article, though? I mean, yeah. Low, I mean, the Feds really regulate the economy based on interest rates and lending money. The government, if they were to stimulate the economy, would be the other method. See, the Feds implementing is like monetary policy, but government implements uh, fiscal policy. 
So the government can stimulate economy via fiscal policy by investing into the economy, infrastructure, public works, you know, helping people get employed and so on. Or, you know, they can have the feds take care of it by in the monetary policy. So other than that, I don't see what else the feds could possibly do to, you know, like help regulate the economy. I think, well, the only criticism is that uh, by keeping the uh, rates low, um, you know, like, the rates in your savings bank are pretty much going to stay low as well. I think that's the only thing that uh, they're, they're criticizing them for. But other than that, um, yeah, not much. I mean, the guy yeah. said the economy is going to be good. So, Well, you also talk about how inflation is bad for people who save money. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, but it's a given. You know, inflation is absolutely normal. All right, well, moving along. The Fed's balance sheet was <gasps> released on Thursday. So if anyone wants to comb through that... That's the website. <laughs> now, the auto industry overall is seeing its uh, best June sales since 2005, but when you look at the individual companies, things are a little bit mixed. Uh, Nissan is recalling some of its vehicles due to steering wheel issues, but saw a 15% increase in sales, mainly from its pickups and uh, crossovers. Um, Ford Motors rose 6.4%, thanks uh, mainly to low fuel prices. Uh, more people were buying their trucks, of course. Uh, General Motors fell 1.6% despite the high employment and uh, low fuel... Inv- um, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, despite uh, the uh, low fuel uh, environment and the... Um, the cheap fuel environment? Yeah, the environment of, or Well, how should I rephrase this? Um Despite there being cheap fuel and uh, high employment, meaning that more people can actually buy these cars, uh, General Motors fell. So anyways, they're screwing some up, just like me and my sentences. Uh, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, on the other hand, saw a 7% jump in sales. Honda Motors saw a modest 3% increase, and Toyota actually dropped 5.6%. You know, it, it doesn't strike me as too shocking Toyota's um, sales dropping due to the lower fuel prices. Because I think one of their flagship products is kind of the Prius, right? Yeah. So, I mean, as fuel becomes cheaper, not as many people are incentivized to drive a slow-moving vehicle. Mm, true. Environmentally friendly, yet low horsepower, but sufficient vehicle. Well, I think up until this last month or so, though, they were still kind of like rising. I think the thing is, is that with them they're pretty much the pack like the top of the pack really and so for them it's like how much more can they improve uh so i mean like yeah for them to drop them like whatever they're probably still at the top of the pack really but yeah i mean you know there's certain companies once they reach the highest point they kind of just plateau so there's not much growth expected from mature companies yeah Now, uh, regardless, many believe that the industry as a whole is still uh, still slowing. And depending on the range that you look at, sales were actually down when you actually look at annualized sales instead of just month to month. And U.S. manufacturing activity increased for June as seen through the rise in outputs and export numbers. But construction fell and figures for previous months were also lowered. Uh, Loretta Mester, the Cleveland Federal Reserve Chairman, says that uh, we should actually start raising rates sooner, saying that uh, waiting too long will only make people tired of the Fed uh, not doing anything to normalize the economy. Uh, What's your take? Because I'm I'm hearing a lot of rumors where everyone's saying that it's possible that we might even just lower interest rates right now. What do you think? Well, I mean, it depends on what what information they have. But if Yellen, this is why Yellen's watched so much and she has such a huge impact on the market, is if Yellen says we're going to increase the interest rate, um, that means that the economy is doing well and we want to slow things down so that we regain our ability to affect the economy when things are bad. So if Yellen says, hey, we're going to lower interest rate, that means the economy is doing worse. Either way, it's it can be it's in, it, it, good news and bad news in, in, in its own way. Um, if she raises interest rate, it's kind of good news that the economy is doing well, but it's bad news for the stock market. If she lowers interest rates, then the stock market might think that the economy is not doing so well, and it's also bad news for the stock market. So either way, you know, some people preach, hey, you know what, get the Feds out of the market altogether, but that's even worse. 
Right. Now, I mean, so far we, we've heard uh, Loretta Masters, uh, Cleveland Federal Reserve Chairman, talking about raising rates. And then uh, James Billard saying that uh, despite the Brexit, that uh, America's economy is actually not going to be, I mean, it's not going to be doing affected. bad. Yeah, it's not going to be massively affected. So that's two, two of the regional uh, Fed, Fed chairmen saying that right there. I don't know what the other uh, regional Fed chairmen are saying, but I mean, looking at uh, Dallas and Richmond, their manufacturing sectors are down. So I don't know what their chairmen have to say about that. But um, I mean, if we see, if we hear more from the other uh, regional chairmen saying that uh, uh, things are going good, then I don't. I I really doubt that uh, they're actually going to lower interest rates. So I mean, that's we true. Have to see. I mean, if anything, they probably hold their course. Right. But I don't know. I mean, yeah. So they're, they're talking about, well, holding their course though. But then they said that they wouldn't raise interest rates until what twenty eighteen. I kind of find that hard to believe too. I'm right? pretty sure Yellen has always been saying, look, at the moment we are not going to raise the interest rate until that foreseeable future, near foreseeable future. No, no, no. They 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 completely backtracked from their plans uh, at the uh, uh, end of last year to slowly raise things. I don't know, but at, it's always at the Fed's discretion. They can raise it at any well, point yeah, in time, yeah, true. really, if they really need to. No, no Fed's going to commit to a two-year time frame where they don't just completely do no action. Right. All right. Well, <coughs> speaking of action, Puerto Rico definitely needs some action because on Friday they announced that uh, they will default on their seven hundred and seventy-nine million dollar in uh, general obligation debt. And uh, three of the biggest Puerto Rican bondholders will recover only roughly $358 million. That is horrible. Yeah. They should have invested in stocks instead of bonds, you know, municipal bonds, which is a joke. Because it is shocking that uh, when your your government, not really their government, but their state government, basically the most trusted authority on, you know, guarantees cannot pay back their debt. That's just horrible. I mean, if you can't trust them, who can you trust? Yeah, on top of that, I mean, there's more than just like what we had just mentioned right here. I mean, there's more in this article, like what, $2 billion of actual, like other sorts of debts and other things. And I guess I'm going to talk about the weekend review. All right, fine. Cut me off there. Slideshow. <laughs> Um, but we'll talk about this in a bit again. Um, so the Dow Jones, um, throughout last week as the uh, whole Brexit issue, like the scare subsided, overall the Dow Jones gained 3% in the week, S&P rose 3.2% in the week, and the NASDAQ rose about 3.29%. So uh, Monday, international markets... So today, last that we checked, uh, Australia kind of doing this like dipping down and then coming back up. And actually, yeah, we'll talk about that in a bit, that little pattern there. But, uh, Australia, so uh, Australia is uh, seeing a uh, concern over their political future with its election season. It's election season over there, if you didn't know. Uh, so that's why it kind of bounced back down. And now it's back in the black, though. I, I mean, I don't know what the... Uh, what the issues are and uh, who the candidates are, but uh, yeah, best of luck, Australia. <laughs> um, the New Zealand stock market kind of having, you know, seeing the same pattern where it's like <laughs> going going down into the red and then coming back up into the black, but it's kind of weird in that it opened lower, but then rose and then came back down before shooting straight back up. So um, Japan opened way lower, and it was expected that today uh, they would actually uh, break their five-day winning streak, but it just kept on going up and up, and now they're back into black. It's actually one of the rare consistent patterns that we've seen thus far uh, in the region. Um, the Co- Korea's Cosby kind of doing the same thing, where it kind of it uh, it goes lower before coming back up, but this one it actually opened lower. Um, but it's in the black last we checked, so yay. Um, Shanghai, uh, also consistent like Japan, but uh, didn't open near anywhere near as low as Japan did, uh, from Friday's uh, uh benchmark, and uh, it's just been on uptrend since. 
Um, Taiwan is a little bit more consistent with the rest of Asia where it kind of like opens lower, comes back up for a bit, comes down and then shoots back up or something, you know, where basically it drops and comes back up for whatever reason. Um, and then there's Hong, uh, Hong Kong's Hong Sung index. So it does also do this sort of like drop or like, you know, going down pattern and then coming back up. But overall, even though, even when it went down, it's the only, uh, index that has managed to stay in the black throughout the entire day. Uh, so it was up 1.68% last we checked. And let's take a look at investor sentiment. Uh, now that Brexit has subsided, there's an increase in people that are bullish, less people that are neutral and bearish. So, I mean, it's kind of... That's I mean, good to know. Yeah, it makes sense. And so let's take a look at the playbook. Now, again, just a reminder, none of the following should be misconstrued as financial advice or investment advice. This is merely provided for documentation only. Um, so my shares in Koenig and Phillips, uh, I'm I'm up a bit, but not by much. Uh, Disney, I'm slightly down. Why? I don't know. Brexit. <sighs> not even, man. I don't know why, why the heck it's down. But Dunkin' Donuts, man, doing pretty good. That's good. Yeah. And then, of course, they're square. And, yeah, they're, like, way down. So uh, how are your investments doing? Mm, I think down, but I still have faith in all my stocks. I mean, if the world doesn't invest in these stocks, I don't know what the world's going to invest in. And even if the dollar becomes stronger, which makes sense that it would negatively impact uh, stock prices, just because our now our stocks are now more expensive. You know, it's hard for people to keep buying the same rate and capacity if the prices are higher. Um, then our stock prices would drop. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of the stocks I've selected are kind of like safe haven stocks that you know even if the world are in panic they'll probably start thinking more about these stocks more so than anything so i'm still relatively confident that i'll be fine well do you still have run. positions in um the caesar ah uh, yes i'm still shorting caesar and it's back down to the well i think i bought at 750 and sometimes shot at 850 no wait, or maybe seven or maybe 650 I don't forget what it was, but at some point in time, it went almost up to $9. I'm like, oh my God, how the hell does a stock about to go bankrupt like rise so much in prices? Still no idea why it could rise so much in prices, but it did. And now it's back down to sub $7, so that's pretty good. That's good. But it's also weird. Um, but I, I guess a lot of sentiment was people were thinking maybe the Caesar can like wrangle out the debt somehow, but I think... The word bankruptcy is now becoming more and more high, like more visible when right. it comes to Caesar. You know, I think before people might conclude, hey, you know what, it's a casino. When the hell is a casino going to go bankrupt? I still don't understand how a casino can go bankrupt, but I guess it's possible. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, if you don't mind my asking, when do, when do those um, when do those put options? Uh, oh no, I have shorts. So shorts oh. aren't puts. Oh, okay. So well, they're they're puts, but then they don't have time frame, but they do have interest on it like a marginal interest oh okay so so you bought it on margin okay yeah, yeah i see uh so you got that uh let's see i didn't check mcd to see how it's going do we both have shares in disney what else do you have um bank of america disney uh what else do i have mcdonald's right right i think that might be it and then the short on caesar so those are my f four positions okay all right so let's move along to the week ahead. Uh, Monday, markets are closed in the U.S. for Independence Day. Tuesday, you have the Gallup U.S. Economic Confidence Index. You got the factory orders numbers, TD Ameritrade IMX report, and the Gallup U.S. Consumer Spending Measure. Wednesday, you have International Trade, Gallup U.S. Job Creation Index, PMI Services Index, the ISM uh, Non-Managing Factoring Index and the Federal Reserve's meeting minutes will be released. Thursday, you have the Challenger Job Cut Report, ADP Employment Report, Jobless Claims, Gallup, uh, Good Jobs Rates, Bloomberg Customer uh, Comfort Index, the EIA's uh, Natural Gas Report and the Petroleum Status Report will be released. And Friday, you have the Employment Situation and the Consumer Credit Report. So, those, those are the things we'll be looking at up ahead. And let's take a look at the recommendations. 
So uh, for those of you who love history, you're going to love this recommendation. Investopedia has an article detailing the history of Puerto Rico's debt crisis. Familiarize yourself with it because if you, if there are solutions for or more problems down the road, the history will have influenced it. Uh, for those of you who are too lazy to read, you can check out John Oliver's interview with Lynn manuel Miranda on the subject. Regardless, I mean, I think uh, we all need to know uh, what's going on with Puerto Rico. I mean, they're so close to us. It's an American territory or protectorate, really. And I mean, um, I'm sure at some point, you know, many of us have some sort of exposure to Puerto Rico. So, Sure. <laughs> I mean, like either, if not directly, you know, at least indirectly, somehow. If you say so. You don't think so? I wouldn't know. I mean, I guess. Okay, well, huh. uh, I'm, I'm just I'm just. I'll take your word here. for it. All right. Um, so that uh, next day's episode, uh, once again, you may or may not have uh, any, uh, ownership of positions in the stock space in the show. Don't buy stock space. Based on information you hear from this podcast, always do your homework and research before you listen to the show. And uh, please.